Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here. And uh, hopefully you folks have been able to find the stream and some of you are coming on here. I am broadcasting from a different location. All right, let's see if we can get some folks on the stream. I am broadcasting from um, San Francisco. And uh, let's see if we can get some folks onto the stream here, if they can find the stream. I had a very uh, detailed stream uh, set up through, um, through Lightstream. And uh, it's, uh, it looks like it bombed out on me but at the last minute. But hopefully you folks can see me and hear me. If you folks can see me and hear me. Hey, Tom from Malibu. Okay, I see you. And uh, Chevy Fish. Hello, Chevy Fish. Hey, Candy, the always reliable Candy. Thank you so much for showing up. Good morning, Daniel. And uh, Chevy Fish. And let's see, Doug. Hello, Doug. Cichlid King. Okay. So we've got a lot of folks jumping on. I appreciate that, folks. I am coming to you uh, from San Francisco, the, uh, the birthplace the birthplace of uh, Bruce Lee. This is uh, why I called this live stream. Uh, this live stream is called, uh, you know, be, be water, my friend, this is a famous quote from Bruce Lee. And uh, the, uh, and the reason I chose that as a, uh, as a quote was because of all of the activity, all of the, all of the action activity and chatter that was going on regarding the, uh, the biological bacteria videos that were released. For those of you that have just come on, the unusual background, I am in the office called The Doors, and uh, The Doors office is uh, one of the offices at Gong, G-O-N-G, G-O-N-G, -G, Gong. Go ahead and look it up on the internet. It's a very, very, um, very advanced uh, uh, software, uh, sales tracking organization that my son works for. Uh, he's being honored this weekend, and we, I came up for a photo shoot. I'm going to be in a photo of him that's going to be appearing on billboards and bus stops, honoring him as one of the top employees out of 250 employees. They picked eight from different departments. My son was one of them, and so I'm going to be, you're going to see me in, in billboards and at bus stops in San Francisco. So if you're in the Bay Area, look for me. You'll see me on a bus stop with my son, Adam, who I'm very, very proud of. Uh, so uh, that's why I'm coming to you from San Francisco. That's why it's a sort of a straight raw live stream without a lot of graphics. I was trying to use the, the light stream, but for some reason, light stream was having a little bit of difficulty from where I was uh, broadcasting from, which is a shame because I had a tremendous amount of graphics and things I wanted to share with you. And uh, so at any rate, let's go ahead and jump right in. I do have uh, uh, quite a few things I want to talk with you about. And uh, let me go ahead and pull up some of the subjects just so I can go ahead and stay on point. And uh, for those of you who are on the live stream, welcome. Welcome, and especially those of you who are in faraway places all over the world. And also, uh, let me just get this set up here. And also a big, uh, a big shout out to my moderators, of course, Candy and, uh, and, and Denny. And, and uh, Kevin Green, if you folks are on, uh, thank you very much for jumping on. And uh, for those of you that just got on, uh, there is no background. Uh, there is no background uh, today, no tank background, because I am broadcasting from an office. And I want to thank last week's uh, Super Chats. We had a few Super Chats last week. And uh, Aquador Deep, uh, evening, Ben, uh, here is some medication for the fish. And... Uh, he, he says, you are the king, which is sort of an inside joke. Uh, Aquador King, I believe, is in Sweden. And uh, sometimes when I wear that, those, those three kings, that hat with the, with the three crowns on it, uh, he recognized that as being the uh, three kingdoms that came together to make Sweden. And so uh, a little bit of the king joke there. So uh, thank you so much, Aquador Deep. And also K-Lord's Aquatics. K-Lord, thank you so much if you're out there for last week's Super Chat. Those Super Chats helped me to... Uh, keep things going and, uh, you know, buy stickers and things of that nature that I can then give, give away to you folks. And um, 
Some of you said that you were, uh, a couple of you said that you were having difficulty with the code, the code uh, to get $10 off on the hoodies. I went to uh, Teespring and Teespring uh, says that the code is still valid until February 9th. So if you want to pick up one of those channel hoodies, you can still get $10 off. Just use the code that was uh, shared in the last live stream. And I will be going, I'll, I'll, I'll post it in the comments underneath this video. And uh, we've, I've had a lot of stuff going on. You folks know that I released a video called What's Wrong With My Fish? Uh, is, or Is Something Wrong With My Fish? And uh, in that video, I talked about the um, some of the sunken belly that I was seeing and uh, my concerns about that. Uh, I've actually run, I've run two, uh, two cycles, uh, you know, two, two cycles of um, Metroplex and uh, Focus. And I've soaked the food in that and gone ahead and put it into the 100 gallon and also into the 150 gallon. So I've done that twice. And, um, you know, when you, when you look at that, when, when you look at that eye biter, uh, you look at, at the, the, the finage, the attitude, the aggressiveness on the eating. Um, he doesn't really display, apart from having that slightly, very slight concave belly, he doesn't really show any signs of having really anything wrong. And so what I've done with both him and also the uh, Star Sapphire in the 100 is I've just really, really paid attention I put like a radar beam on them when they're eating and I've watched, I've watched how they move and how they go after food. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what I've noticed is that they tend to be, they, they tend to be a little bit um, slow in, in the uptake. In other words, they're, they're not where they should be strategically to, to get food. So what I've done is I've changed my, my feeding to, to dropping food in parts of the tank back and forth where they happen to be hanging around. Because I think part of the problem that I've run into with these guys is, is uh, certainly with the Star Sapphire, a little bit of stress because he's getting harassed, I think, by the Maduka White Lips. But I'm also running into a situation where they simply can't get to the food as as quickly as they as as the other fish and so they they're not getting enough nutrition to really help them to to fatten up and so uh, what this is doing is it's causing them to actually be on the on the thin side you know and uh, bec only be because they're under eating i mean really as simple as that they're under eating now with the star sapphire there could be some stress issues as well and these stress issues could be uh, affecting the immune system and allowing uh, bacteria or parasites to be more active than they should. At the same time, you have a fish that has looked this way and operated this way for years. So it, 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 it makes, you know, it, we have a couple things at work here. We have a couple factors at work, getting to the food, being able to get to the food, uh, stress and harassment and, and, and uh, you know, the possibility of something inside of them that they're not quite turning the corner on and not being able to get enough nutrition. So I, I did two rounds of Metroplex and Focus. Now I'm gonna add some charcoal to get rid of the residuals along with some nice big water changes, of course. And, uh, and then I'm just gonna keep a real close eye on them and see how they do. So uh, that's what's happening on, on that front with the, um, with, with the videos, you know, is something wrong with my fish, uh, which got a lot of views, a lot of people, people chimed in and it was actually very surprising to me how many people, how many people have a fish that has a, 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 a slightly concave stomach and has been functioning and acting normal and being colored up and, uh, you know, being aggressive and going after food and, you know, doing all the things a normal fish would do, but has a slightly concave stomach. A lot of people commented, some people said, well, there's parasites or there's bacteria or that fish is sick or that fish is, but a lot of folks also commented, I've had a fish like that for years and it doesn't seem to get better. It just, he's just that way. He just seems to be built that way. So um, I'm not really sure what, uh, uh, you know, ultimately have I nailed it down completely and entirely? 
I, I'm not positive about that, but but we'll watch. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it and see. The um, the eye biter, if you've seen some of the photos I've posted recently, is is just looking spectacular. I mean, he's just uh, a beautiful blue with a deep blue streak down the middle of his body. His finish, the, the bottom, the angle fin is yellow with a black trim. I mean, he's just he just looks gorgeous. And so uh, I, I'm not worried. Uh, I'm not really that worried about this 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 guy. Um, the, the Xerox, the Xerox has always looked that way, is a very aggressive eater. I'm not really sure what's going on, but I don't want to keep bombing the tank with antibiotics. I don't want to go through like necessarily a third round. Um, even though I had to order more of the stuff I had to get, I mean, when, when you're trying to treat 150 gallons, you go through a tremendous amount of medication and my quarantine tank was already being used up. And I didn't want to put those fish in a 10 gallon. Uh, so um, at any rate, that's what's going on there. And uh, uh, I will keep you folks posted and see if that uh, Metroplex, see if the Metroplex and the and the Focus actually did anything uh, to to help remedy that situation. The uh, the other videos which I released, uh, which you're 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 very aware of, the. Um, I, I had the, the video on uh, the, the baloney video, which uh, <laughs> which is is uh, trending very very well. I, I I don't know exactly how many views. I think it's I think it's up over five thousand views. Um, I can check real quick and tell you the uh, uh, what if it, what if it's all baloney? And uh, let's see here. And uh, it's up to oh. What if it's all baloney? That is over nine thousand views right now. So uh, it looks like we 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 you know we stirred something up, and 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 Sharpie's models and aquatics. A big shout out to you for for planting the the seed in my brain, and uh, and getting me thinking on this line, and uh, and then that was followed up by a video where we featured uh, we we featured Corey. Corey McElroy, uh, one of my favorite uh, fish keepers, one of the folks in the hobby that I really respect. Uh, the man's gone through a lot of education and uh, taking a lot of classes, has a lot of uh, you know certifications for a variety of things, from plants to fish to a lot of other things. And so he was kind enough to chime in. And so that was the follow-up video where um, you know Jim Jim Socks as Filter Media was the. <laughs> Which was that 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 uh, that clickbait uh, that clickbait was was off of the final comment, uh, really off of the comments of Corey, where he talked about how he knew somebody that in the beginning he thought was crazy, but uh, but in the end realized that the guy was was a genius because uh, gym socks were notorious for bacteria, and so uh, and and so. Uh, if they were notorious for bacteria, if you wear them too much and don't wash them, well, maybe they would work in an aquarium. And apparently this person was doing that and getting phenomenal results. Something interesting from those two videos, aquarium uh, filtration, uh, Corey McEl uh, McElroy chimes in, and the other one, the baloney one. Something that I noticed very curious, that was very curious on that was that it was like a lot of folks who use, um, who use the, the these, very simple, simple systems under gravel, using substrate as uh, as media, so only sponges. People who are really into the, the basics, the basic basics, and have had tanks for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. A lot of these folks came out, uh, uh, just came out of the woodwork. They came, it, it was like, it's like they probably don't chime in because they're tired of people saying stuff about, you know, not using the latest and the greatest, and how come you're not, you know, following the current fashion or whatever? And it, it's like they came out and and in mass, and they commented on the video. Hey, man, for years I've just been using, I've been I've, I've been using uh, an under gravel filter. For years I've just had sponges in my one filter. That's all. And um, so it was a tremendous number of comments from people that uh, that run their tanks on an absolute basic, basic level, and have had success for many, many years. Um, somebody even uh, directed me over to, I think it was LR, is it LRB or there's a fish keeper uh, on YouTube 
who who has tanks and and the plants do all the lifting. The plants do all the heavy lifting. And so I uh, I even went to that person's uh, YouTube page, watched some of the videos. Uh, he was featuring a beautiful guppy tank, and all he had in there were plants, and the, the tank was absolutely pristine. So um, it just goes to show, you know, that that um, uh, we can make something very very complicated, and and we can make it very simple. And if you look at nature, uh, nature is uh, seems to uh, find a balance that is very elegant and very simple and really not that complicated. And, and that's really the direction that I see my fish keeping going in the direction of simple. Um, would I say inexpensive? I'm not gonna say that because I probably will be acquiring expensive fish, expensive tanks, you know, larger tanks, those, that requires money. And uh, as you know, but simple in the form of filtration. So um, that I had a great response, a great response to those videos. Uh, over 5,400 views on the gym socks video, uh, 9,000 views on the aquarium filter, uh, makers are going to hate me, the baloney video, but I call it baloney video. And then something is wrong had over 5,600 views. So, uh, a great response to that combination of videos. And I really thank all of you for, uh, watching and sharing and commenting. And I say this very, very sincerely. If you haven't watched those videos, I don't even care if, you, if that much, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I didn't care at all, but I don't care that much whether you watch the video or not, but read the comments under those two videos. You will not regret it. You, you will get, as I received, you will get a, a filtration uh, education. There were so many different angles and comments from, uh, I love my fish too much to risk just using sponges uh, because I think that is going to uh, put my fish at risk. And then ultimately the question, will it, will it put your fish at risk or have you actually bought into the hype? So you have these extremes. I'll never pay a lot. I'll never pay a lot for, 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 you know, you have people commenting, I'll never pay those prices for that expensive stuff. I think it's all hype, blah, 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 blah. Then you have the other folks, the other side where I'll, I'll never put my fish at risk. I'll get the, the best that's out there always because I love my fish. And, and that ties into Corey's comment about um, in, in what motivates us. It, it, you know, we love our fish, so we want to do the best by them, right, number one. Number two, very often fish keepers are motivated by fear, fear that their fish are going to die. And, and, and don't think that, that aquarium media manufacturers don't feed to a certain degree on the fear, on the fear that your, your fish are gonna die, you're not providing the best for them, uh, don't you love your fish? What kind of fish keeper are you? Uh, you need to transfer $200 from your pocket to mine. So, uh, so at any rate, we, we had uh, some fascinating discussions that I loved, absolutely loved, and um, check out the comments under the, the two videos. Aquarium filtration, you know, Corey McElroy chimes in, and aquarium filter media makers are going to hate me, and the 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 uh, the actual uh, thumbnails are gym socks as filter media, and what if it's all baloney? Check out the uh, comments under those videos. Uh, someone even suggested that we should make a course, an actual uh, course, uh, and uh, with the using the comments that are in those videos as part of the course. And uh, I thought that was that was very interesting. So that's what's going on. And um, I wish I had some graphics for you. We're going very vanilla today, very plain Jane. And I feel silly because I packed a couple cameras. I packed two, two terminals, light fixtures. And here I am old school with just a, you know, just a, a CAD cam, Logitech camera and a computer. So I, I overpacked, but whatever. So... Uh, <laughs> So at any rate, and what's coming up, I'm doing a, uh, I'm going to be doing a uh, product review on a nano, nano hang on back that was sent to me from China. Check it out. It's going to post tomorrow. Uh, this thing is uh, damn cute. It's about uh, maybe a little bit bigger than this phone. 
maybe just a little bit bigger than this phone. And it's a hang on back. I have a, um, I have a, a, a small uh, aqua top or not aqua top. It's a uh, top fin. I have a small top fin, uh, 10 gallon, and it comes with a, with, with a, a little canister, not even a canister, a little, a hang inside. Not a hang out, not a hang on back, but a hang inside. And it takes room out of that already cramped 10 gallon uh, for the filter. And it has a down tube that's about this long. So the down tube doesn't really pull from anywhere, really, except the top four inches of the water. So instead of using that, I'm going to start using this little hang on back that was sent to me from uh, China. You'll see it in tomorrow's video. And it's just a, a nano hang on back review. Look for it. I think you'll like it. I'm also gonna do a review on a nitrate test kit that is being promoted at in some of the uh, saltwater sites like Bulk Reef Supply, uh, uh, BRS, BRS, Bulk Reef Supply. You can go to their website, you can go to their uh, YouTube channel. They, they have video series on uh, aquarium care. Usually it's reef and salt but they uh, have tremendous, a uh, lot, lot of great products and things they talk about. But they have a test kit that's about 15 bucks on Amazon, or you can get it from them directly. And it's called Salifert, uh, S-A-L-I-F-E-R-T, I believe, Salifert. I'm gonna be testing that, and I'm gonna be using it uh, against a CCAM nitrate test kit. Uh, you're probably familiar with the CCAM has a standalone nitrate NO3 test kit. I'm going to compare the two of them and see how the results, uh, you know, stack up against each other. And I'm going to do it, um, you know, as in, in real time, I'm going to pull water from the tank. I'm going to put it into the, into the cups and then we're going to see how, how we, we, how they come up. A lot of people, a lot of folks that I run into uh, and, and will only test if they, if something's wrong with their fish, they will only do a test if they notice that something's not right or fish aren't acting right or diseases is starting to show up. Uh, and, and part of the reason is because they've lost faith in the test kits. And um, I, I, I've read in several of the blogs how, for example, with, with a master test kit, a person was getting like, you know, 80 to 100 parts per million of nitrate. And then when they picked up a different test kit or compared it against something as simple as Tetra strips, they were getting very different readings. Now, these very high readings that they were getting from, from the master test kit were alarming. They were doing large water changes, uh, more frequent water changes. All of those things create stress for your fish. You could have pH shifts. You could have the local water authority, you know, water treatment, but adding things to the water that you're unaware of. And all of a sudden you shock your fish in some way. Maybe you forget to match temperatures. Maybe you forget to treat the water. So you're putting yourself at, to some degree at risk every time you do these big changes. So if the test kit is not accurate and it's giving you these false readings and now you're chasing, you're chasing this thing. And, and what if, what if it was all wrong data? What if you were doing all this and putting your fish through all the trauma of all these water changes or whatever. And, uh, and when they were, ne were not even needed, if you, if you had a test kit that you really trusted, and you saw your nitrates go from 10 to 30 and then do a water change. And you, and you were, and that's the way you did it. You're meticulous in doing a water change when your nitrates had a slight jump or maybe once a month, if your nitrates never jumped, let's say you're one of those folks that have that Holy grail of, of the full cycle and you have enough plants and enough, uh, uh, anaerobic bacteria that you that your nitrates are being absorbed, you would still want to do a water change, I think, at least once a month to replace the, um, the, the minerals, reduce the hormones, things of this nature. So um, at any rate, uh, an accurate te test kit would be a very, uh, a very good thing to have. So watch for my uh, review on the Salifert test kit. And, uh, and one more thing, I'm going to be doing a... Um, I'm going to be doing a uh, a live. I'm going to be showing up live at Nolan's Aquarium, Nolan's Aquarium in Southern California. Uh, there's a flyer. I'll, I'll 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 post the flyer in the community section of the YouTube 
uh, my YouTube channel. Also, I'll put it up over at the um, over at the Facebook group page, the Ben O apostrophe cyclic group page. So uh, look for that flyer. I'm going to be there um, doing the live stream from 10 to 11. And then at 11, he's going to unlock the doors and you folks come on in and we'll do a little, a little uh, meet and greet. And uh, maybe I'll take a few stickers down with me or something. Or we'll just have some fun. We'll chit chat about fish a little bit. And uh, then I'll go. Uh, we'll, I'll be on my way. I've got to pack up and go. So, um, so what else has been going on? We, uh, hey, last Sunday I turned 65. What do you think about that? 65 years old. It's a miracle I can sit up and talk. So uh, I turned 65 Sunday, but it was a little bit of a dark day in Los Angeles because of the Kobe Bryant situation. And um, so it's, it's, a, it's a birthday I'm going to be remembering for a, uh, for a variety of reasons. And one of them, of course, uh, uh, a, bit, a bit dark and sad. You could literally feel, you could feel it in Los Angeles. I went driving around and there was definitely a, um, literally and figuratively, there was a, a dark cloud over the city. Uh, this man had far more uh, influence in Los Angeles than I think he even realized uh, and how much he was loved in Los Angeles. So uh, Sunday was a very odd day for me, uh, celebrating my birthday and then having um, a couple of my children crying because of what had happened. And uh, so it was a very sad, uh, sad day in a lot of ways. But um, at any rate, at any rate. Um, so um, that's what's coming up. And um, I also have one more announcement of what's coming up. Some of you are familiar with Richard, Richard uh, Thru. Richard Thru is also known as the Pong Guru. And my videos, uh, the, uh, the Jim Sog video and the Baloney video had people under there raving about Biohome. And it had people in there going after Biohome and, and Richard um, and the products. So he is not controversy free, but he has uh, offered to provide me with a video that speaks to the subject that he even commented under some of the videos you can look and, and see pon guru's comment a lot of people comment under his comment because he's so popular he was actually one of the if you go back to my 10 tips that big 380,000 viewed video 10 tips he's one of the fish keepers that i shout out to who i watched in the very beginning especially some of his uh pimp my canister pimp your filter uh, you know, how to set up a canister correctly. He was one of the folks that I really uh, followed originally along with John over at KG Tropicals and also Jay Wilson. Those were like three of my mentors in the very beginning. And um, so he's going to be chiming in. So that will be very interesting because we're gonna, I'm sure we're going to get some very interesting comments under, you know, under his, uh, uh, Richard, under Richard's, uh, Richard through, under Richard's uh, uh, video because, you uh, he is a uh, uh, a very interesting, uh, very interesting fellow, and um, let me see how you folks are doing here on the comments. And uh, I didn't mean to really change the subject into something, um, uh, you know, something sad. Yeah, I didn't mean to bring up. I didn't mean to put a dark cloud over the live stream. Um, also, uh, Gurvinder Parmar, Gurvinder Parmar, you are now officially. A moderator. I have just uh, upgraded you to moderator. And uh, so uh, Gravinder has been a, a, a big contributor and participant in these live streams. And we started talking through email. And uh, I believe he's, uh, he's uh, definitely a good guy. So Gravinder, you, you now have the, the uh, you now have a moderator status attached to you so you can help. Uh, because sometimes you know, sometimes the moderators get caught up. I know Kevin has had some situations where he had to be with his daughter and uh, and Denny had some other things he had to do. And so it's great to have other moderators that can step in. So thank you, Gurvinder, for uh, being willing to do that. And you are, uh, I just changed your status to moderator. And uh, so you should, you're going to be seeing a little, like a little ratchet or a tool showing up next to your name. Um, I'm also probably going to take uh, YouTube up on the offer of being able to create memberships, but it's not going to be, I don't think I'm going to do a membership where you get 
um, member only content. I'm not sure if I want to do that because again, it sort of separates an us and them. I'm going to create the membership to be really um, just a way that you can help support the channel if you want to, like with a buck a month, uh, two bucks a month or something. Something that you, if you want to support the channel, you can become like a member. I'll, I'll, I'll put that together over the next few weeks. I'm, I'm going to, I've got some real busy weeks coming up. Not sure when I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to be in Mexico. I'm going to be at Nolan's uh, in a couple of weeks. I'm going to be in Mexico for nine days uh, for, uh, uh, to, get, to get some dental work done, actually, and uh, with my wife. And so um, it's not really a total vacation. So uh, at any rate, uh, I'll get to that eventually. So um, how many folks do we have on here? 81? Okay. I see 81. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm on a lag. And we're half an hour into it. So let's... Uh, Let's take a look here at uh, at the subject of today's. Why did I call uh, you know be 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 water <laughs> be water, my friend? That's a that's a famous quote from Bruce Lee. I thought I would use a Bruce Lee quote because I I'm in the birthplace of Bruce Lee, San Francisco. He actually was born in San Francisco. His family went to China. They came back to Seattle, and ultimately, of course, ended up in Los Angeles, where he opened up some dojos. But uh, the, the reason I picked that was, one, because I'm in San Francisco, and two, because the comments under the, the, the beneficial bacteria videos, if there was one message that came through loud and clear in those videos, is that we don't have, as a hobby, we don't have one answer. We don't have one answer that fits everything. There is no, uh, it's, it's a fluid, dynamic uh, hobby, a, a fluid, dynamic process with a lot of moving parts that, that have to be taken into consideration. I even thought about doing a, a, a graph, but the graph would have to be three-dimensional. You, you know, you, you, you increase the stock of fish, they overrun the, the beneficial bacteria. You have an ammonia spike. You add stability, uh, you know, or, or, or turbo, you know, from, from Fritz. You get the bacteria up. Uh, you know, you, you start feeding less. You know, one person suggested feed less before you add fish uh, because that way, you know, you'll, you'll have a light, uh, a light load and then, or, or feed more before you add fish because that'll, that'll bulk up the bacteria and, you um, and then when you add the new fish, go back to feeding less. So you'll have that extra bacteria. Some people said add those products like Turbo or, or Seachem stability when you add fish. Uh, there's just so much. It, it's such a fluid, it's such a fluid uh, problem. You know, it's such a fluid question. And, uh, you know, nobody could answer how much bacteria do we need. No one could answer uh, really definitively. Do we need the, the the 50 square miles available on some of these on some of these products? I did, however, get a tremendous number of comments, over 200 comments in the first day on that uh, "What if it's all baloney?" video, and a lot of those comments were stating that the substrate and a few sponges, or the substrate and an under gravel filter, were providing all of the all of the surface needed to support a stock tank and that it had been running for years and years without a problem. So we have that camp and then we have the camp of, I will never ever run a tank without the best media I can get my hands on. So you have these two, the, you know, and again, this camp saying it because they want to do the best by their fish. My question being, are you doing the best by your fish by doing that? Or is, it, is it really making a difference? You know, both of you are going to the store. One of you is going to the store in a Chevy Cruze. One of you is going to the store in a Porsche. At the end of the day, you're going to the store and coming back with a bag of groceries. So not sure if the end product is going to be different. And from what I was hearing in the comments, it didn't seem like the extra cost was making a difference. I don't know. Then you've got this factor. This expensive media is a one-time cost, unless the media disintegrates. Now, for a while, there was a wrap 
uh, you know, there was a bad rap on Biohome. Oh, the stuff is going to fall apart. I started to buy into that. I would I would do the um, the cleaning of the canisters on my sixty gallon, and I would pull the Biohome out and I would squeeze it, and you know squeeze on it to see if it was actually falling apart. Never. It's been in that canister for two, three, maybe four years now. Rock solid. Uh, the the media is still rock solid. I, I'm actually having more disintegration occurring with the marine pure, the marine pure that's in there, which is a very high end, very expensive. Uh, and, I, and I get more dust and pieces breaking off of the marine pure balls than I than I do from the biohome. So, at any rate, a lot of stuff floating around. Um, don't believe everything you hear on on YouTube. Uh, certainly, don't believe everything I say. Do your own research. As my friend Evan Alexander likes to say, you know, not just from a stranger on YouTube, right? So, so let's take a look at some of the comments that were made last uh, last week. I'm going to be looking at a second terminal. Uh, let's see here, and then I'll pick up some of the comments today. If I've missed a super chat, I am sorry. Let me check, roll back real real quick. And uh, if I've missed any super, for those of you who don't know, super chat is your way to throw a little money into the pot. That is something you can do if you like, and it helps support the channel. You also can support the channel by picking up some of the uh, products that are discussed or shown at the Teespring, and uh, including hoodies and coffee cups and teas and uh, and things like that. So let's see here. So last week we had um, Inventory King, my friend Paul. He wanted to know how's the Hawk Penthouse. <laughs> The hawks are doing fine, Paul, and uh, they are moving a lot of gravel around. You know, I sweep it up and make it look real nice like I did at the end of that video. And in about three or four days, there's a, there's a pit and there's, you know, there's, there's um, you know, there's the crushed coral starts to spread out into the bear tank, into the bear bottom area. But they are getting along well. The male has great color, beautiful blue. When I feed him from above, he's got some beautiful blue going on. Um, are they going to be uh, breeding? Fingers crossed. I don't know what else to do. Water changes, uh, candles, Barry White, Marvin Gaye. I don't. I don't know what else to do. But uh, and so if I don't get some breeding, maybe in the next four weeks, uh, probably the the female will be rehomed. If you're in Southern California, you like a nice big beautiful female, probably pushing five inches. Um, shout out. Let me know. Come on by. If you can give her a good home, I'll probably just give her to you. So uh, Sean's Aquarium. Do you have to keep cleaning out your sump? Uh, Sean's Aquarium, every filter at some point is going to need maintenance. Uh, a sump, in my case, I have a, um, a pinky floss pad that sits on the drip tray where the water comes into the first chamber of my, um, of my wet dry system. It's a wet dry drip where, and the water comes into the, the drip, a drip tray and then trickles picking up a lot of oxygen, by the way, uh, trickles through a, a, a big pile of, uh, of media. About 10 FX6 worth of media, it gets dripped through that and then uh, goes out from under that chamber and then goes through a very thick mat and sponge that I picked up from Swiss Tropical. Uh, that piece of pinky floss, once a week, I pull it out, I put a fresh one in. And that pretty much... That's all I do with that sump. If I see the, um, I have this, this big sponge that's standing up that the water has to go through to get through the middle chamber. If I see the water level higher on the, on the front end, you know, on the direction of the sump, right? And the water's traveling this way. If I see the water level there higher than on this side, of the sponge, I know that the sponge is starting to get blocked. And so at that point, yes, at that point, I will um, turn off the pumps and uh, uh, go ahead and pull that big sponge out, rinse it in some uh, tank water uh, very gently, put it back in and uh, make sure that the shrimp don't uh, don't get out. I got shrimp that live underneath that first chamber and on that on that sponge. And I think they're breeding because I keep seeing little baby shrimp. So they're, they're, they're doing something. And uh, so he must like it in there. But, um, 
but it's a very simple process. Now I've heard of people who, um, there's one fellow I follow on, on YouTube who started to have a bit of an increase in nitrates and couldn't get it under control, broke down his entire sump, uh, rinsed everything in tank water, vacuumed it and put everything back in. And that seemed to handle the problem. So maybe, uh, maybe in a year I'll have to do the same thing. I don't know, but that's not, uh, the sump is very, very easy, very, very easy maintenance. Uh, much easier than a canister. I don't have to crack anything open. I don't have to do, there's, there's nothing to it really. Very, very simple. Um, <clears throat> Chevy Fish, Chevy Fish, what about putting the canister at or above the water level to prevent the tank from draining? This was in response to a comment about how one of the things I don't like about canisters is that because of where they are, if your tank did start, if your canister leaked, it would continue to leak until, because you'd have a siphon going, it would continue to leak until, you know, it got to the to the bottom of the intake or until what air could get into the intake. So um, I don't know if you could put a canister above a tank because it, it really operates, it starts off with a siphon process. So I'm not really sure, I, I think it relies on the gravity and siphon to, to some degree to be able to function. So I don't know if you can get a canister above a tank or not, I've never tried it. If you've tried it and you're watching this live stream, or maybe you're watching it after it's posted to video, if you uh, to YouTube, if you've tried that, chime in, uh, comment below the video, and let me know. Now they do have some um, some filters that I've seen that sit on top of the aquarium, and basically they have a pump that goes into the filter and then it trickles down and then goes back into the into the tank. And if that pump was to fail, you'd only have an increase in a few inches of water level. Uh, those are pretty interesting pumps, kind of like a trickle with trays. It has trays in it. So you've got your, you know, you, you can put your your uh, your coarse, medium, fine sponges, maybe a little biological in there if you want. And it just trickles down and then goes through a hole. I think Joey over at the King of DIY, he made one of those using like a planter box or something, uh, you know, something real simple. So um, that's something to consider. If you want to put something above the tank, that would limit how much water uh, could actually get out in the event of a failure of some kind. That would certainly be an option. And um, we had a question from um, Michael Visser. Michael Visser, if you're on the uh, stream. Ben, you are awesome. Watch and listen to your videos while I'm doing tank maintenance. Between you and Pond Guru, I've learned so much. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate that, my friend. Love the positive feedback. Love the encouragement. Uh, Rocket Rod 56. Wanted some help on how much do I feed? Uh, I, I tend to feed what they'll consume in just a, a minute or two. Uh, and if I air at all, especially based on what you just heard me talk about with regards to the concave belly, if I err at all, I err in the direction of underfeeding, which probably um, you know has its own set of problems. You know, if you underfeed, there are fish in the tank that might not be able to get to the food because they they don't hang around the top or they're not fast enough or aggressive enough or high enough in the pecking order. So you have to sort of watch for these fish. And um, a good example is uh, my albino pleco, the albino pleco in the 100. I have to really watch where he's at and try and drop food in that area because he just can't get on top of it fast enough. And for a while there, he was looking a little skinny. I try and sneak in algae wafers and the cichlids just pick them up and they start playing soccer with them. They start playing keep away and they steal it from each other. It's very funny to watch, but I have a pleco that isn't getting it, you know, isn't getting the, uh, the wafers. And so, uh, so I try and feed uh, in a way that everybody gets food. So I alternate between different sides of the tank. And um, and now I'm more conscious of making sure I'm feeding enough. Uh, not overfeeding, but enough so that in my visual inspection of what's going on, I see that nobody is actually being completely blocked out of being able to eat because they're too slow or too intimidated by the fish. Uh, Rocket Rod 56 also asked, as far as disease goes, 
what's the white spot on the dorsal fin of my clown loach? Uh, without seeing, without seeing that loach, I can't really tell you. I'd have to see a picture, and um, if it's just one spot, uh, it may it might be damaged from where another fish has has hit it. It it could also be uh, a fungus, you know, something like that. It could be something more serious. Uh, I would start with some very good water changes, you know, 50, 60 percent water changes, and um, see if it if it starts to heal on its own, which is of course the best way. Uh, if it continues to get progressively worse, pull that fish out, isolate, and start some medication. So um, it didn't sound like, based on the discussion that occurred under the video or under the uh, the live stream, it didn't sound like it was ick. Didn't have that salty granule look to it, just a a spot. Um, Chevy fish sunken stomach could be internal parasites or stress from other tank mates, which causes him not to eat. Yes, exactly. We had somebody last week on the stream, I keep fish too, I keep fish too. And uh, I keep fish too, I keep fish too, that's the name. And that person said, Candy, you're the best, love what you're doing for everyone, keep up the good work. Now, um, I, just want to, I just want to second that. Candy, you're awesome. Uh, when I ask Candy if she's going to be at the streams, when I... Um, I mean, she is, I, I call her Miss Reliable. She, she's the most, one of the most reliable people I know. And so, uh, Candy, you rock, you rock, Candy. And so, I keep fish too, I keep fish too. You are spot on on that. Uh, Joshua Kuntz, Con, uh, Joshua Kuntz, C-O-O-N-T-Z. Ben, longtime listener, first time caller. Love you, love the show. Uh, Joshua, thank you. Thank you for the encouragement, my friend. Lou, 9294. Lou9294 is one of the people I shout out to in that 10 tips video. One of the first people I started listening to when I first got into cichlids. Uh, love that guy. Does a lot of great stuff and uh, uh, has had some personal issues uh, that he's been um, fighting with. And uh, we, we uh, send you good vibes, my friend. His comment was, peace and blessings, my friend. Back to you, Lou. Uh, peace and blessings to you. Tom uh, Addings. Uh, our friend in Malibu. Ben, is that a juvenile Bucochromis notitania over your right shoulder? Um, yes. Yes, Tom. I have a young uh, Buco in that 150, and I'm still waiting to see if that anal fin starts to develop a point and if I start to see some color. Um, so I'm really hoping. I didn't see any change in the behavior of the fish that would indicate that a female was in the tank. I did see a change in behavior when I removed the uh, the hawk. So that hawk was obviously releasing some kind of hormone that had the fish a little bit worked up. They calmed down when I took the hawk out, even though none of them were going after the hawk or trying to breed with the hawk. The only breeding activity I see is like between the Fusco and the Malawi uh, trout and between the uh, Venusus and, uh, and, the, uh, and the Fusco sometimes. I see them doing a little little dances, uh, the, which are all males, but who am I to judge? And the, the uh, uh, so they were not going after the trouble. When I took her out, I noticed a change in behavior. The fish kind of calmed down a little bit. And I didn't see that behavior come back when I put that buco in. So I'm hoping it's a male. I'll wait another three months, four months, and if I don't see it color up, if I don't see that anal fin start to get a point on it, if I don't see the dorsal start to get a point, and if I don't see more color in the face, I'm probably going to reach out to one of my favorite vendors and ask them for a male buco because I love that fish. That fish is one of the most beautiful fish in the hobby as far as I'm concerned. And with some spectacular males, people think it's a saltwater fish when it really fires up. I mean, it's just a gorgeous fish. Um, Craig K., what have you found to be the best lube to be for the O-rings on your FX6? Uh, uh, Craig K., I'm using Husky, Husky food grade. Uh, it's a silicone Husky food grade. Be sure you get food grade, something that is you could, you know, if you ate it, it wouldn't kill you, wouldn't hurt you. Uh, it, it'll be gentle on your fish. So be sure to have food grade in the description of the silicone 
There is some lubricants you can buy like from Fluval uh, that are aquarium specific. Again, they probably buy it from Husky, put it into their own tube, put aquarium specific and triple the price. So um, I just use Husky, it's inexpensive. I don't like, you know, five bucks or so for a big tube. When you lubricate the O-ring in your FX6, realize that you also have uh, rubber gaskets around the motor and also on the intake and outputs, you have gaskets, you have rubber gaskets. Lubricate everything. Lubricate all the O-rings uh, because they will all break down over time. So just do it. Do a whole, if you're going to do it, do the whole shoot match and just be sure you're using food grade. And um, Rohan Ferris. Rohan Ferris. Good day, Mr. Ochart. One of my fish stopped eating and I don't see any visible sign of any sickness. How would you approach the situation? And it's about, it's been about two days. And it's a male. Thank you for clarifying that it's a male because sometimes they stop eating because they're holding fry, they're holding eggs. And uh, you can worry that it's not eating, but it's not eating because it shouldn't be eating. And um, so thank you for the clarification on the sex of the fish. The um, variety of issues could be parasites, could have a bacterial internal infection, could just be under a lot of stress because a tank mate is, uh, do you see any fin damage? Do you see any, um, you know, like the, the tip of the fins? Do you have any side, any marks on the side of the body where it looks like it might have been hit, where it has some scales that fell off because it was hit? Uh, do you see any signs of aggression? Do you see damage in the lips where it might have gotten into a lip lock with another fish and lost? And because it lost, now it's, it's actually lost its position in the, the hierarchy and is now feeling very down and uh, could actually be getting it, an illness that might have been dormant uh, until it was under a lot of stress and then the illness started to take hold. So uh, keep an eye on them. Again, water changes. Um, watch the tank, see if anybody's going after them. Sometimes after the fish is given up and is hanging in a corner somewhere, the other fish lose interest. <clears throat> they don't see them as a, as a um, challenger anymore. And so you may have lot, you may not see what got them into that position because that battle is over. So um, keep an eye on things, do some water changes, see if he perks up. Sometimes after a couple of days, they'll start eating. Another thing you can do is uh, soak the food in focus or in garlic guard. They seem to find garlic irresistible. And so if he's gonna eat, he's, if he's gonna eat it all, he's gonna go after garlic. That's my opinion. I've also used the, uh, the cubes I believe they're from Omega-1 cichlid cubes that have garlic in them. I chop those up and I drop, in, drop them in in the area of the fish that's not eating. And uh, they will usually go after those because they're very irresistible. If you soak the food in garlic, garlic guard or focus, if you, uh, if you use some of those uh, Omega-1 cubes and the fish is still not eating, chances are you have a bacterial or a parasite issue pull that fish out, put them in a quarantine tank, and maybe hit them up with some general cure. Um, if you don't see a change, wait a little bit, add some charcoal, hit them up with some uh, Metro and some focus, you know, you know, just, and hopefully you can pull them back from the fire, okay? The problem sometimes, of course, is that by the time we figure out what's wrong, it's too late. The Whatever it's got them has really got a hold of them, and, uh, and we can't really pull them back. Um, Lala's fishy friend. Lala's fishy friend. Good afternoon, all. My question may be a little crazy, but what is your routine and method of feeding your cichlids? Um, I touched on that a second ago, Lala's, and uh, I try and move back and forth between different parts of the tank, and, and I sprinkle a little extra in the area where a fish is having trouble getting to the food, like the star sapphire, or my albino pleco. I'll, I'll, I'll get everybody's attention by dropping some food on the far left, drop a couple large pinches on the far left. All the fast eating aggressive fish will rush to that side. And then I'll sneak in some, you know, some, some, some food on the right side and hopefully it'll get down fast enough 
to where the uh, you know the plico can jump on some of it, and uh, and the other fish can get to it. So that that's that's the method I use. I um, I like to keep I like to see them eat it up fast. I don't like to see food sitting on the bottom or let, or staying at the top. I like to see it gobbled up quick. Um, I might start soaking my food a little bit, like the way that Adam C does. I, I might start doing a little bit of that, especially with some of the big. I ordered some three millimeter pellets for the big fish. Those are very large pellets. Uh, you could make an argument that the second that pellet hits the water, it starts softening up very, very quickly. You don't need to soak it. Uh, you could also make a case that if it's soaked, it's going to go through the digestive tract easier and have less likelihood to clog the system. I know Adam C. was talking about that in a video. Uh, let's see here. Brian, I see clear acrylic seams on the tank behind you and wonder your take on clear or black. Black won't stain, but clear is much nicer for viewing. I... Um, I've, I've, I've resealed some tanks. I did one tank in, in black. I didn't like it. And so I removed all the black and redid it again in clear. It was the 135 gallon tank that you can see in some of my older videos. I like the clear seam. It, it's just more aesthetic to me. That being said, the 60 gallon has a black, a black seam, but it is done perfectly. I think what I didn't like about the black was that because it was done by me as a in, a in a home, you know, like a home job, um, it, it wasn't perfect. It was a little bit ragged in some parts, and so it wasn't as clean. Black really shows the quality of the seam. White is a little more forgiving. <clears throat> so at any rate, I would um, I like them both. I think clear would be probably I I'd put ahead of, of of black. You're right if you do use a um, some kind of a medication. Uh, maybe some type of a copper containing, but you're going to stain. You're going to stain the silicone. Uh, that could be a problem. And uh, my favorite, my favorite of all, is my 100 uh, Clear for Life. It has a rounded corners in the front, and so there's no seam in the front. It's just round, and it does kind of create an odd carnival mirror effect on the fish when they swim by it. You know, they're, they're a little bit distorted or stretched, but I love that 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 round edge on the front. And so I would love to, to get a custom made 300-gallon, uh, 10-foot wide tank that's low with rounded front corners. I think that would be awesome. Probably more expensive. It's probably a much longer process to get that perfect piece of acrylic, you know, bent just right and you know that's that that takes some some workmanship, so uh, that's my favorite really uh, of all the tanks. Uh, Captain Nemo forty nine. Should the water flow from the tank overflow down into the first chamber or out the bottom and up through the next? Um, <clears throat> Captain Nemo, I think you're asking about water flow in a sump, and um, you know if you start googling. Uh, or just searching on YouTube just under sumps, you're going to see every possible combination. You're going to see the first chamber overflowing to the second chamber and the second chamber going underneath and then going through something like a sponge that it has to, you know, and then another chip. You're going to see all, everything from homemade uh, sumps uh, to, you know, your, your, your more expensive you know, your ESOP and things like that, uh, prefabricated or even custom made sumps. You're gonna, I've seen square sumps where it goes into four chambers in a square and in one of them it goes through the middle and, and then through the bottom of the next one, then through the top of the last one. And so, uh, you know, you see a whole variety of, of, of combinations. And uh, so I can't, I, I can't tell you that one's better than the other. If I were to make a sump right now, I would probably just buy a, a uh, maybe a 40, maybe a 40 long and and uh, just have the water come in through a sock and then go through some matten sponges and then maybe have a little bit of, of gravel or, or uh, uh, coral and uh, maybe something where bacteria can grow, maybe even some lava rock and um, and then have a return pump. And, uh, you know, but the, the sponges would be, you know, two inch, two inch coarse, 
thick standing sponges that, that are in baffles, you know, that are being uh, about, so you have two inch sponges sort of back to back, coarse, medium and fine. So the water's gotta travel through those matten sponges where bacteria will be growing like crazy and then maybe flow over a little bit of inexpensive uh, material and then go back to the uh, go back to the tank. If I was to make a homemade sump, I'd probably do something like that. You can buy on eBay uh, custom kits that just hang uh, that you just hang on to the edges of the of the tank, and <clears throat> they allow you to put a sock or even two socks, and, and where the water will come in, and then like once every few weeks or once a week, take the sock out and uh, and swap it, you know, rinse it or swap it. <clears throat> so. Let's take a look at some of the questions here. And uh, let's see, we have about 84, 54 thumbs up. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the thumbs up. And uh, let's see, Michael Harris, is Washington considered far away? Michael, Washington, D.C. is very far but Seattle, Washington, for example, is not far, really. One of my sons lives up there. I'm going to go visit uh, visit him. I'm going to try and arrange a trip to the uh, co-op, to Corey's uh, shop while I'm up there. And uh, my son is up there at a place called Driveline. It's a high-tech baseball development laboratory. Let me see. Um, Rocket Rod had trouble maintaining heat. 220 gallon system with five heaters. Bought two digital heaters and installed last night. That's a lot of heaters. What was the, I mean, the key question, of course, is what was the wattage on those heaters? I mean, I've, I've kept a 150. Right now I have 250 gallon heaters uh, keeping a, uh, uh, keeping 150 gallon right at 78 degrees, which is my preferred temperature. But granted, those heaters are in a third chamber of a sump. So there's, they're, they're keeping a small amount of water. They're having to heat a, a, a circulating amount of water. But I would think that a couple 220, a couple 400, a couple 300 watt heaters with a controller I, I would think that would do the job. I think if we if we err as fish keepers, we 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 use too much wattage. Um, I think a couple three hundreds with some good circulation should have been doing the job for you. I, I'm, I don't I don't know. Uh, that seems like a lot of heaters. A lot that can go wrong there. Um, on the subject of heaters, I uh, and upcoming videos. I promised you a review of the uh, rescue air by Cobalt. And um, I'm, I had to send that back to Cobalt. I couldn't get it to start when I would turn the power off. I had it on a power strip. I would turn the power strip off. I would unplug it. I would unplug the power strip. No matter what I did, the rescue air with a fully charged battery would not kick on. And so I wrote to Cobalt. Cobalt gave me a number, a return number and I had to send them the unit. They received it, and they determined that the chip was bad, and they're sending me a new one. Uh, so apart from having to go to the post office and spend you know, $8 in postage and what have you, um, they're going to make good on it. Now, hopefully, the next one is going to be good enough for me to do a review on. You already have a little bit of a tainted situation by the fact that I got a defective one. That being said, and I don't want to turn this into a cobalt bashing session, I have two cobalt neotherms that are running perfectly on my on my sump. They stay at 78, and they're doing a wonderful job. I have a third neotherm that I purchased. Um, I didn't purchase it. It was actually a gift. And for the life of us, we can't find the paperwork on it, but I have it, and it's in my 60-gallon. The damn thing goes up to 95 degrees. Thank God I have a controller on there because the controller shuts it off at 80. If I didn't have that controller on there, I would have come back from work and I would have found some very distressed or probably dead fish. 
I'm still using it because the controller shuts it off. And the way you use a heater with a controller anyway is you set the heater at a higher temperature and you set the controller at the temperature that you want. So I was never really in any danger, but I've unplugged it and plugged it back in. I've played with the buttons. I've done everything that you, you should do and it resets itself to 95 degrees. I have written to Cobalt and I have told them, I said, I'm sorry, I don't have the receipts. However, it would seem to me that you would want to get heaters like this that could kill fish and kill your reputation off out of the market. It would seem to me that you'd want to do a recall of sorts and gather up those heaters and figure out why it's not working and fix it within your own within your own assembly, within your own factory. Finally, after several times telling me without a receipt, we can't help you. Finally, after that letter, and after telling them I had 20,000 subscribers, after that letter, they wrote back to me and said, take a picture of the, of the heater in the tank, take a picture of the heater outside the tank so we can see the, the number on it, and, and then we will get back to you. So we'll see, we'll see. We'll see if they make good on it. I have um, I've become a little bit mixed in my feelings about Cobalt, to be totally honest with you. And I hate to say that because I did meet one of the owners of Cobalt at the American Cichlid Association in Houston. I thought we had a very good talk. Seemed like a straight, per, you know, straight shooter. Assured me that the heater issues had been resolved explained to me what had happened with Joey about how he had strapped some of them together, how he should have done that and how that's what created his situation with Joey did come out and say later that that was why his heaters had the problem. I think it ended up killing a, a, a stingray or maybe one of his arrow. One of his deer fish were killed by a heater malfunction. Anyway, we'll see how that resolves. I will keep you updated. If they back it up and they clean it up, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm good. You know, if you stand behind your product, if it was my company and somebody had a product that was uh, potentially going to kill fish, I would say, I don't care if you have the paperwork. Send us that product. We're going to tear it apart and find out. And we're sending you a heater right now. Even if I didn't have 20,000 subscribers, I would just get that thing out of the marketplace because, uh, you know, someone's going to turn around and sell that thing on eBay to someone else. I mean, it, it, it's, you know, you, you know, you want to get those out of the marketplace. So uh, watch, watch for an update on that. And that should be coming shortly. If you know me, you know, I hate to rant. You got to take, you got to take me a long way before I'll rant. And uh, so anyway, maybe that's not really even a rant. So um, Thank you so much. It looks like somebody just threw $10 in the pot. I thank you so much for that. And uh, let me see who that was here. I got to catch up on the comments. GP, hey GP, thank you, buddy. I really appreciate that. You're a trooper. And let's go back here. Let's take a look at some of your comments. How are we doing on time? Oh, it's about 11. Okay, I'll tell you what, folks. I'm, I'm going to look at your comments, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, – and go ahead and uh, pick them up in the next live stream. And because I don't want to run too late. Last week, I had poor Candy in, in stress because I ran, I don't know, what, a half hour, 40 minutes over. I was just babbling on and on. I look at the I look at the, the clock and it's like, you know, when you start these live streams, you're thinking, am I going to have enough to content to cover for an hour? That's the biggest fear probably every live streamer has. Do I have enough to say? And then you get going. And then you look and it's like, oh my God, it's been an hour. So uh, uh, to my moderators, thank you so much. To all of you on, on the stream, thank you so much. Daily life, I see it. Uh, my puffer, his puffer at, at Ben O apostrophe cichlid on, on, you, on, on um, Facebook. Cichlid is in the name, but a puffer is on the banner. <laughs> we had a uh, banner contest and... Uh, and uh, Daily Life won the banner contest. So go, go, go to the Ben O. Posture Recycling Facebook page and look for that beautiful puffer, puffer that belongs to uh, uh, to Daily Life and uh, beautiful fish. And also, he gets a gift certificate from Super Cichlids 
Uh, Lisa Hober and her family, great, great shop. Love those guys. And uh, so he gets a, a gift certificate for being uh, the banner contest winner. So um, I promise I will go through the entire chat and I will pick up the questions that I miss next week. Uh, next week, I will not be at, uh, I'll be back home. So you'll have the aquarium backdrop. And uh, the week after that, I will be at Nolan's in Santa Ana. Don't forget, there's a flyer. It's going to be distributed. And hopefully, I will see you at Nolan's in Santa Ana. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Love you all. I'm going to go out and enjoy San Francisco, spend some time with my son, go to the Golden Gate Bridge, have some great coffee. And thank you so much for tuning in. You are the best. You rock. And uh, that's it for me. Goodbye.